Welcome everyone to the introduction to Encloth inside of Maya and Anul. So Encloth is a dynamic cloth simulation inside of Maya that creates an amazing cloth simulation. So this is going to be an introduction level how you can create a basic cloth simulation and then after a couple of videos you will see how you can go in depth with this. So let's start off by creating a simple plane here. Now this is going to be our cloth. Right. So I'm going to delete this. Let me just show you. So right now what we have is a modeling menu. So instead I'm going to click here and go to FX because we are into the FX now. So what I'm going to do now is go to the end cloth and here you will see bunch of options to create your specific type of cloths. So I'm going to create a plane here and I'm going to bring this up and scale this up and I'm going to take something to collide with. So I'm going to take a simple cube here. All right. And I'm going to select my plane and go to end cloth and I'm going to say create end cloth and that's it. So if I play now, you'll notice that the cloth falls, but it's not interacting with the cube. And the reason is because we haven't set any colliders yet. So I'm going to select my cube here, go to end cloth and say, this is going to be a passive collider. So now if I play this again, as you can see, it collided perfectly. So one thing to keep in mind is if I turn on my X-ray mode, as you can see, you see here something called as an N here, which represents nucleus and nucleus is something you can call it as the brain of the overall simulation. If a particle has nucleus, that means it contains all the fields, for example, gravity, friction and so on. If a particle simulation does not create a nucleus or it does not contains a nucleus, that means it doesn't have a brain or you can see it doesn't have an inbuilt force. That means we have to manually add some force into that. But in this case, we don't have to manually do anything because this is a nucleus simulation. That means it already has gravity and everything. So that has been taken care of. So if I play this again, as you can see, it's doing the cloth simulation, but the cloth looks pretty bad. And the reason is because we don't have enough division in our cloth to begin with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in my channel box or polyplane here. And as you can see, we have 10 divisions for the width and 10 for the height, which is 20. So I'm going to play this back and I'm going to make this somewhere like 30 and 30. All right. And one thing to keep in mind, always, uh, you can start your always start your playback from the beginning if you are somewhere in the mid for example right now and if you make some changes to something like this this is going to happen it's going to disappear because uh, an end cloth needs to refresh the overall system so always go to the beginning of your frame and then you can start over again all right so now i'm going to hit play again and now as you can see the cloth simulation overall looks much better now all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to increase some more segments into this i'm going to make this somewhere like 50 and 50. let's go to the first frame play this again and now we have amazing cloth simulation all right and one thing you'll notice is that right now the cloth is falling from our cube so how can we prevent it so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on my cloth here and you have this option tab called end cloth. Click on this and uh, let, let me just go to the nucleus overall. Yeah. So you have nucleus overall to control your overall gravity and then you have the end cloth shape, which is the most important part in the whole end cloth. So you have the collision right now, as you can see, you see your primitive as a gray shaded. But if I play this and you can go to the solver and solver is basically running the overall simulation so if i go to collision thickness you can see the collision right now the thickness that the end cloth is treating this plane as not a linear plane but some depth with it like it has been extruded so what i can do here is i can reduce the amount of sorry self collision thickness to somewhere like this to make a precise you can say cloth so like for example we have a pretty thin cloth so i can make make sure you're not uh, pushing this too much on the negative direction because if you does that the collision thickness will you can say intersect with the original plane and it will not collide perfectly so i'm going to keep this to somewhere like 150 and this is how you can see different kinds of thick uh, things like for example stretch li uh, links and if i go back and play this again so this is going to show you the overall stretchness here because you can see the overall triangulated geometries here and you can change the display color if you want to something like blue here and then you have a couple of more things like bend links, weighting and so on. So I'm going to keep this off and then you have the bounce here. 
all right so the bounce is basically it's going to bounce the overall cloth we don't want any bounce on my cloth because this is a cloth and what we want is the friction here and this is going to be the important part when we are creating a cloth that's kind of slipping away and we want it to stuck to the overall ground or whatever your object is okay so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to change the value of my friction to something like 0.2 and friction is basically the overall slideness of two objects how much they are slipping away so i'm going to change this to 0.200 and let's see if it makes the overall simulation any different all right so we see some changes but not a lot and uh, so i'm going to change this friction to somewhere like 0.5 and let's see now okay so the friction is working nicely but i think we have to crank the value just a little bit so i'm going to make this maybe like 800 let's go with 800 okay so now as you can see it's not slipping away so i think the 0.800 value is perfect for this and then you have the overall stickiness which you can treat it as a glue if your surface is kind of a glued and this will just stick to the surface if you don't want to use the overall friction you can use the stickiness here and i can make the value to 0.200 and let's see how this is treating the overall cloth and 0.2 is working great i think i'm going to make this 0.3 and i'm going to restart the simulation okay so this is working perfectly this also works so i'm going to create a simple table here uh, let me just go back here and I'm going to make this something like this and uh, let's get rid of the overall caps here and let me just increase the subdivision and access to 60 I think that will be perfect all right so let me just extrude this all right so this is we what we have a simple kind of a table and this is going to be our collider so i'm going to go to my end cloth and create a passive collider and let's restart the simulation and you have a nice cloth on your table all right so right now what you'll see is the overall viewport is kind of a pretty slow looking simulation and the reason is because we haven't cached our simulation so let's cache the overall simulation so we can run this pretty fast so what cache is going to do is create some temporary files which is going to be readable by the software and that will just help with the overall playback speed so what you're going to do is click on your end cloth surface right now we have this plane and i'm going to go to my end catch and create new catch and right now what we have is an n object not a maya fluid if you are using something like a bifrost we have to use the maya fluid so i'm going to click on this click on this box here and then you by default you have the overall destination for your cloth simulation catch and then we have the catch name you can keep it to whatever you want and then if you want one per file per frame or one file uh, whatever depends on you and then you have catch time range which means a render settings the first thing if you have like for right now what we have is 200 200 but for the render settings i can come over here and maybe change the overall extension to something like this and maybe put in 300 for the fine simulation if i don't want to view the whole 300 frame on the viewport i just want to see 50 frames so what i can do is i can put 300 frames in my render settings and i can use that for the fine render so the, i can just test the overall simulation in my viewport for just 50 frames so it doesn't slow down my viewport and then you have the time slider which we have right now and then you have start and end which means basically using a manual value number of value like for example i can put in 400 if i want from here whatever works i'm going to use my time slider here and i'm going to click on create and this says you already have a cloth simulation so i'm going to say replace existing by default you don't have any simulation because i run a couple of simulation by default it has some simulation so i'm going to just replace it all right so our catch has been done and it was pretty fast so now if you go back and play this as you can see this looks pretty smooth now perfectly so i think this looks overall pretty good to me and i'm just going to start off my ipr and let me just take a simple direction light here just so we have some lighting going on okay let's turn this up let me close this down and now we can see the overall result
all right so this is what we have so i think the overall simulation looks pretty good to me and you can play around with this you can play around with different kinds of cloth simulation and this is just going to be this was just an introduction level video uh, we are going to dive more into the end cloth we are going to study how the constraint works and so on but this was just to get you started with your first end cloth simulation so i hope you enjoyed this and what you can do is just play around with different kinds of primitive like for example if you have a simple sphere and uh, if you just want to create some abstract looking stuff what you can do is you can take a simple plane here and increase this and we create a 50 and 50 and uh, go to end cloth create an end cloth and some passive collider so let me just play this now go back play this And now you have nice looking simulation going on. You can catch this and then play back. It will look pretty smooth. And now it's kind of slipping away. That means we have to manage our... I think this looks pretty good. Uh, but if you don't want the overall slippiness, if you want it to stick to the overall sphere here, so what you can do is increase the number of friction or the overall stickiness, whatever works for you. And now I think it looks pretty good. So yeah, play around with this, dive into it, play around with the overall different kinds of primitive to create some amazing cloths and you can create some curtains and so on with this. So have fun, again thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.